If you was actually just trying to help people, you would. People know that's how I pay my tithes. If I got paid $100,000 to be at your city, I'm gonna take 10,000 of that and put it in your homeless area. That dude did something for me, brother. I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. When I was leaving the show, I thought he threw me some in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel. It was $15,000, bro. Comedian Cat Williams has been making waves following his viral interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. While Williams is celebrated for his comedic performances, his philanthropic endeavors often fly under the radar intentionally. He has emphasized that his charitable actions stem from a genuine desire to do good rather than seeking attention. Despite his low-key approach, there have been disturbing reports of individuals attempting to intimidate and stalk him due to the widespread attention his interview has garnered. Because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. While receiving a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is a privileged honor, it comes with a hefty fee. There is a $75,000 sponsorship fee upon selection. According to the site, the fee is used to pay for the creation and installation of the star as well as maintenance of the Walk of Fame. Recently, it was reported that singer and Broadway star Melba Moore received the 2760th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We welcome to the After the August 10th ceremony, Moore revealed that Williams single-handedly helped her secure the coveted honor, in the category of live theater, live performance. Quote, a public thank you to KW, he is the sole sponsor of my star, she wrote in an Instagram post expressing gratitude. Cat and me have a friend, she continued. Williams, accompanied by Cheryl Lee Ralph, Jimmy Jam, and Lou Nell at the ceremony, paid tribute to Melba Moore by acknowledging her outstanding achievements on stage, in television, music, and film. Moore's accolades include winning a Tony Award for her role in Broadway's Pearly, and receiving four Grammy nominations. Williams emphasized Moore's unique position in the industry, stating, quote, I looked up who paved the way for Melba Moore, who excelled in all of those things, and I found out that that person did not exist. Melba Moore is a one-of-a-kind talent in our industry, and that's what we're celebrating. And fans were so impressed by Cat's generosity that one person tweeted, quote, Cat Williams consistently proves that even though he's crazy, sometimes he's a real one. He sponsored the $75,000 fee for Melba Moore's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Well, it doesn't stop here. When Richie Redding initially crossed paths with Williams, Redding was an aspiring comedian striving to establish himself in the industry. His breakthrough came when he received an opportunity to open for the Star of Friday at the La Chorus Center in Philadelphia. After delivering a well-received performance, Redding had the chance to meet Williams backstage. Redding recounts that Williams not only admired his set, but also paid him five times more than the original agreement and pledged to support his career on the road. Over the next three years, Redding joined Williams for an impressive 160 shows. Expressing his gratitude, Redding tweeted, quote, I wouldn't be where I am today if he hadn't been the first person to believe in me. This sentiment highlights the significant impact Williams had on Redding's career, providing him with crucial support and opportunities that propelled his comedic journey forward. In 2013, following a performance in Boston, Williams demonstrated his generosity by gifting a fan $1,000 in cash upon learning of her need for a kidney transplant. As reported by TMZ, a member of Williams' security team noticed a woman in tears and inquired about her distress. The woman tearfully explained that these were tears of joy as it marked the first time she had laughed since receiving the news of her kidney transplant requirement. The security team escorted her backstage to meet Williams. Moved by her story, Williams handed her a sheet of paper containing 10 $100 bills along with a note that read, God never leaves. Cat is one of the most generous people that you ever gonna meet. And a lot of people don't know that. He don't get a lot of press and love for that. One of the most generous ever. This gesture illustrates Williams' compassionate and caring nature, showing his willingness to help others in need and uplift their spirits during challenging times. Feeney Segal recalled witnessing Williams generously distribute $200,000 in his former neighborhood. In an interview from the previous year, Segal recounted seeing Williams in the neighborhood responding to the residents' needs by distributing financial aid. Ten, ten, ten. He talking. He looked. Get our money. By the time he came back, he had no money. That was like 200. 
Williams decided to assist by giving each resident $10,000 after learning about their difficulties. He even selflessly gave away his own mink coat to a lady in need. You often hear that truly understanding the inner workings of an industry requires first-hand experience. One of them big they, they uh, cooled off, he gave it to somebody. This was giving them money. I know what money is. Comedian Cat Williams recently provided some intriguing insights that shed light on this notion. Williams hinted at significant revelations concerning many black artists' careers. Those are just facts, sir. <laughs> how, how, many, how many is that total? Nine. So you've done nine? Yes. filmed comedy stand-up specials without ever getting financed or having a deal. Kat's disclosure about his former idol might be surprising to some, but the subsequent revelation is even more shocking. He asserted that Steve Harvey, a favorite among many, has purportedly made a deal involving his soul with Hollywood. I think Steve Harvey's some stand <laughs> man. No, I'm a kiss the <laughs> old girl who owned TV One. He used to kiss her. That's how he had the radio. So as reported by Hot New Hip Hop, Boozy recently went live on Instagram and shared his thoughts on Cat Williams' widely discussed interview. The rapper expressed that he had no comments to make regarding the Cat Williams situation during the live session. I don't know nothing about that, he explained. I know that he a real guy to me. Boozy elaborated on a specific incident where, upon his release from jail, he found himself with nothing. I got in touch with my people and said, I won't give Boozy two tickets, a couple of tickets to come to my show at the arena tonight. During that challenging time, Cat Williams extended a genuine gesture of support by inviting Boozy to his concert with front row seats. After the event, Williams surprised Boozy with a generous gift of $15,000. Boozy recounted that many celebrities had rallied for his release with the free Boozy campaign, but their support waned once he was out of jail. It was all 100, man, 15,000, bro. Damn. I had been home nine days. Damn, okay. Yeah. So, so that helped out. However, Cat Williams stood out for Boozy as someone who went beyond mere vocal support. Reflecting on the unexpected $15,000 gift, Boozy emphasized that it was a sincere and heartfelt gesture, highlighting that he didn't even know Williams at the time. I never knew Cat Williams. Oh, so he was a stranger? I was a stranger. The act of kindness left a lasting impression on Boozy, and he expressed gratitude, stating that he would never forget Williams' generosity. I never forget that dude, bro. If, bro, if he fall, he always got me, J. If he fall, he always got me, bro. Boozy first shared his encounter with Cat Williams during an interview with DJ Vlad, with the initial segment released on YouTube on December 15th, 2023. Subsequently, on January 7th, the platform released a clip featuring Boozy recounting his interaction with Williams. He he threw it in there, bro, and just left. He ain't say, huh, bro? He ain't say. He just threw it in the window, bro. I opened it, bro, a little bit down the road so I couldn't even turn and say thank you. In the interview, Boozy expressed his intention to reciprocate William's kindness, stating, Whenever I see him, I'm going to give him whatever's in my pocket. Just like that. Boom. If it's 10, 20, whatever's in my pocket, he going to get it. Boozy went on to describe the spontaneous exchange, explaining that he was about to leave in his car. Williams approached him with a towel secured by a rubber band. Mimicking a throwing motion, Boozy illustrated how Williams swiftly handed him the bundle and returned to the arena without allowing Boozy to express his gratitude. Boozy's friend then handed the bundle back to him, revealing that it contained all $100 bills, totaling $15,000. He ran up with a rubber band and a towel. It was all 100, man. 15,000, bro. This is more than just a statement. He expressed his position precisely when Cat needed support the most, indicating that he cautioned those comedians advocating for Cat's cancellation. Undoubtedly, Cat Williams is widely recognized as one of the funniest comics of his generation, celebrated for his unfiltered humor and dynamic performances in his hit stand up specials. Despite his talent and status among Hollywood's comedy elites, Williams hasn't attained the same level of mainstream exposure as some of his peers. A supporter noted, quote, Unlike Kevin Hart, he hasn't embraced leading roles in blockbuster movies, and he doesn't host a show like Steve Harvey. Being hopeless, he once even said, quote, I'm just going to go ahead and announce my retirement from stand-up. I'm kind of done. I've already discussed it with my kids. I wasn't really going to do it on a Seattle street. I was going to Los Angeles and do it in the offices of ICM or Live Nation. 
For a while, there were rumors suggesting that Williams had been blacklisted from the industry, prompting inquiries into why he hadn't reached the same level of success as figures such as Steve Harvey. It's noteworthy that Williams and Harvey have had a strained relationship for over a decade, and there appears to be a substantial reason behind their ongoing discord. Well, you know, to be honest with you, Frankie, I didn't, I didn't know nothing about this concept. When the promoter told me about it in October, I shot it down, because that ain't how I've ever promoted a show. To trace the origins of their feud, we must revisit December 2008 when Cat Williams publicly criticized Steve Harvey before a Christmas season show. This incident marked the initiation of their conflict, which has endured for over a decade. It's worth noting that both Cat Williams and Steve Harvey have been involved in disagreements with other comedians, and this particular instance was no exception. Even one of his fans wrote, quote, I haven't liked Steve Harvey anyway, so this just confirms my feelings. I do trust Cat, though. He delivers messages with such wisdom, and I just feel in my gut he's the real deal. He's definitely one of my favorites. Another one added, Cat is solid at battle comedy. Steve is household, but household doesn't usually mean funny. Household means you're big and funny enough for them to make a bet on you. You won't venture too far off the plantation with your act, and your stature makes you hard to argue against, even if you are wrong. Cat is like an Italian sports car. His humor is fast and maneuverable. He's like Ali. He hits and moves. Given a choice, I'd rather fight with Steve more than Cat. According to Cat Williams, Steve Harvey's public image may not be as positive as it appears to some. Depending on who you talk to, Harvey is either celebrated as one of the funniest individuals on the planet or viewed as a celebrity with less than stellar reputation. Williams has asserted that Harvey has some skeletons in his closet, including rumors of mistreatment towards his staff. Persistent rumors have circulated regarding the renowned comedian and talk show host not treating his staff well. Furthermore, after his talk show relocated to Los Angeles, Harvey allegedly sent a controversial memo to his new staff making demands typically associated with tour riders. These allegations have contributed to the existing tension between the two comedians. I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room, to sit in my makeup chair, to walk from my dressing room to the stage. Cat Williams appears to have legitimate reasons for his grievances against Steve Harvey. In November 2015, the Think Like a Man author faced a lawsuit for allegedly going back on plans to lease a private jet. This occurred after over $400,000 worth of renovations had been initiated reportedly at Harvey's request. The requested enhancement included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls, according to TMZ reports. He wanted two of the seats removed inside, so there were only 12 instead of 14. He wanted custom carpets in there. Williams has also alleged that Harvey, who starred as a high school music teacher on 1996's The Steve Harvey Show, lifted the premise of the show from comedian Mark Curry. Curry starred as a teacher Mark Cooper on the sitcom Hanging with Mr. Cooper, which debuted in 1992. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had, Williams said. Now Steve got a sitcom where he's the principal and he wears a suit. Cat Williams continued to elaborate on the circumstances leading up to the V103 interview, shedding light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics. According to him, a woman behind the scenes persuaded him to participate in an impromptu interview that he hadn't scheduled or prepared for. Despite his initial reluctance, she persisted, assuring him that the interview would solely focus on celebrating his recent Emmy win for the city and promised to avoid sensitive topics such as his children or legal issues. During the interview, tensions between Williams and Smith escalated around the 13 minute mark when he criticized her interview style. The situation took a sharp turn when Smith made the mistake of suggesting that Williams had a dated perm. Although the segment was nearing its end, co-host Frank Ski was ready to cut to commercial when the exchange turned heated, leading to the creation of viral history. My hair is 19 inches long and I have no perm. You don't. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Come run one of your gnarled fingers. Why you own air? The exchange between Williams and Smith continued to escalate with Williams hurling more insults at Smith. He took it a step further, suggesting that she remove her headphones and wig. In response, Smith fired back, advising Williams to take off them old ass clothes you got on. Unfazed, Williams decided to make a point by opening his jacket, revealing an item he claimed to be from an unreleased Versace collection. In a sarcastic tone, Williams remarked, I want to apologize to the people at Versace collection. 
this is your 2019 summer but, line that but, hasn't but, come but, out. But you had but, to open it up and but, show us it with Versace. I want to just... No. Co-host Frank Ski struggled to contain his laughter and transitioned to a commercial break to salvage the situation. The aftermath of the interview took a dramatic turn, resembling an episode of Atlanta. The day after the segment, it was reported that Smith's husband, Lamora Sellers, allegedly confronted and chased Williams into a Home Depot. According to reports, the comedian Cat Williams informed Gwinnett County Police that Lamora Sellers, the husband of Wanda Smith, a co-host for radio station V103, had allegedly pointed a gun at him outside the Atlanta Comedy Theater, as reported by WSB-TV. Sellers, however, offered a different account to the police. He claimed that he had chased Williams into a nearby supermarket but denied pointing a gun at him, stating that his firearm had fallen out of his waistband during the pursuit. After the reported altercation between Williams and Sellers following the interview, Smith addressed both incidents on air. She recounted that at the comedy theater, Williams approached her, stating, quote, I told you messing with me will make you go viral. Due to legal constraints, Smith refrained from providing additional details about the altercation. However, she openly discussed feeling attacked during her interview with Williams. During an open conversation with Vlad TV, Williams shared a perplexing experience where he felt uneasy due to what he perceived as advances from Diddy. The narrative begins with Williams attending a party at Diddy's extravagant mansion expecting a night of socializing with fellow celebrities. However, he notes that there were no women in attendance, only men. All lies will be exposed, that's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. Feeling uneasy, Williams tried to leave, but Diddy persistently pursued him, making suggestive comments and even offering a suspicious drink. Sensing the situation, Williams declined the drink and firmly expressed his lack of interest in Diddy's advances. In his own words, Williams emphasized his stance regardless of Diddy's wealth, fame, or power. Quote, I am not gay and I am not going to sleep with you. However, his rejection seemed to shock and offend Diddy, who resorted to trying to intimidate Williams by threatening to harm his career. Undeterred, Williams stood his ground, emphasizing that he had nothing to fear. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that <laughs> I was telling you about. <laughs> Eventually, Williams managed to find an exit from the party, putting the unsettling encounter behind him. His decision to disclose this experience stemmed from a desire to illuminate the darker facets of the entertainment industry and caution aspiring artists about whom they place their trust in. Williams made it clear that his concern wasn't with anyone's s, but rather with feeling harassed and pressured into something he didn't desire. He underscored the importance of respecting boundaries and emphasized the significance of consent, irrespective of gender or orientation. Quote, I respect everyone's right to love whoever they want to love, but I also respect my right to say no thank you, Williams stated emphatically. Reportedly, Boozy has also confronted Diddy for his misbehavior with Cat. However, he found himself in another controversy. During a moment where Tyson boldly declared he would engage in certain actions until others liked him, delivered with a straight face, whispers about his S orientation circulated. Although many initially dismissed the incident, questions resurfaced when Tyson confronted Boozy about his own S preferences, prompting renewed speculation about Tyson's personal life. I have a really small guy, I have a really nice guy. I'm talking to him. And so two days go by, three days go by. I'm in the gym and the gym is surrounded with cops. While Williams candidly expressed his views on fellow celebrities, Kanye West received a different treatment. The stand-up comic attributed humanity's treatment of West and his mental struggles to being judgmental. Quote, I suspect that we're pretty awful people. If we say that somebody's got a mental illness and then we watch what they do, he explained, you are the one that put him in a position where he thought he was God and could call himself Jesus. And you're the one who told the guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. You're the one that's like, so what do you expect? He also provided some intriguing insights that shed light on this notion. Williams hinted at significant revelations concerning Tiffany Haddish's career. According to Williams, Haddish's rise to fame may not have unfolded as naturally as she has portrayed it to the public. I'm the introduction to Tiffany Haddish in the movie School Dance. The clip for School Dance has been seen more times than the movie has. The seasoned comedian holds the perspective that Haddish might have expedited her ascent within the entertainment industry. If you've ever questioned the authenticity of Haddish's persona, this revelation is not one to overlook. While stories of celebrities leading double lives have surfaced repeatedly, Haddish's journey to the pinnacle appears to be a unique case. Cat Williams left no detail unexplored in his disclosure. Did you think she wrote Girls Trip Goofball? 
right? Or do you think that was already a script and they handed it to her? It, it's up to you, whatever you want to believe. So after all these revelations, it makes sense to his fans that he may be facing some difficulties in the industry as he has taken some really big names.